Hi everyone, I'm James and this is World Builder. This is a tutorial series focusing on making good looking and affordable terrain and miniatures for tabletop games, dioramas, or even just as little decorations. We're going to be starting off with making a simple log cabin in the woods. So here we go. We're going to start off by looking at all of the materials and tools you'll need for this build. So it might look a little daunting at first, but the main elements that are required are foam card for the actual structure, skewers for the decoration and implements to cut them with. So we're going to start by drawing a circle with a compass. Mine was 5.5 centimeters in radius, but the size is ultimately up to you. The next step is cutting the foam card into shape. What will make the whole process easier is cutting out the rough shape first and then trimming the edges away once you've got a more manageable area. Now, definitely don't do what I'm doing here and cut towards yourself using the Stanley knife, but at this point I was just trying to figure out where to set the camera up until I set it on a good solution. Once you have the circle cut out, it's time to start beveling the edges. So this is cutting at a diagonal around the edge of the foam card so that we get a nice smooth slope from the top surface to the bottom. Then after that, we can carve some rougher chunks into it to give it a more natural and weathered appearance. After this, we'll add a little bit of detail by using smaller sections of foam card. Here, I'm peeling the paper backing off of the smaller pieces because once we've glued it together, we don't want several layers of paper back to back and the bare styrofoam gives it a much better texture for painting. You want to leave the paper backing on for the base piece though because that will give it some structural integrity. Now we're using PVA glue to stick our smaller rock pieces to the base. We don't want to use anything like super glue because this will melt through the exposed styrofoam interior of the card. And given these are just decorative pieces and not holding any weight, the PVA glue is going to be enough to keep it in place. Now I'm marking out the rough shape of where the log cabin is going to go. This will help make sure that we don't texture over areas that aren't going to be seen once we add the polyfiller. So this is just a simple plaster for filling cracks in drywall, but it works really well to give a weathered natural ground texture. I'm just smearing it liberally over the foam card and then mostly avoiding the area where the house will eventually sit. Now, here's an optional step that isn't necessary, but will add a nice additional layer of texture to the model. Here's some powdered cork. You can get this from hobby stores. It's often used for model railways. If you can't find any though, dry sand will fit the bill just fine. Now I'm shaking the excess off into the bag. Anything that sticks to the polyfiller will dry with it and add texture when we paint the model. Once the polyfill is set hard, we're going to give the model an undercoat of black paint. While the undercoat is drying, let's start measuring out the dimensions of our log cabin. So I chose mine to be two centimeters on the front by 2.5 centimeters tall and five centimeters long on the sides. But you can choose any size that fits depending on how much you want it to dominate the base of the model. Once that's done, we use hot glue to secure the pieces together, trying to keep the glue drippings on the interior rather than leaking around the edges of the model. Though this isn't essential as we'll be adding some additional detail into the outside later. With the base of the model done, let's do the roof. So this is just a triangle with the same base length as the front of the model and then two roof panels that are the same dimensions as the walls. We want the fit to be as flush as possible, but if you have some abnormalities or asymmetries, that's not too much of a problem since we will be adding that detail to the roof and the sides later. Now I'm using simple barbecue skewers to make the logs themselves. I'm measuring half of them out five centimeters long to match the edges of the model and the other half six centimeters. So we have a little bit of overlap to get that really distinctive interlocking log pattern. With another dab of hot glue, we're gonna start securing these to the foam card in an alternating long and short pattern. While that hot glue is setting, I'm going to slice up a little bit of cardboard to make the door at the front of the building. I've also cut up some additional skewers to make a little door frame around it. 
Now we're using the Stanley knife again to cut a couple of strips the exact length of the roof pieces and cutting irregular shapes into them to make shingles for the roof. You can use scissors for this, but using the Stanley knife gets you a nice neat cut. Then we use PVA glue to stick the shingles onto the roof. Super glue or hot glue are an alternative for this, but you really don't need them and PVA will do the trick. You need approximately five strips per side, depending on the size of your model. And then what will help conceal the seam at the top of the roof is a couple of bent over cap pieces, creating a ridge along the top of the model. To fill in the space at the front of the model, I've got a couple of twigs from outside, let them dry out and cut them into shape to form cross braces. I've hot glued them onto the front of the model and then done the same at the back. Now that everything's assembled, it's time to start undercoating the house as well. Again, we're just using black acrylic paint here, and you may need to water it down periodically to get down into the cracks of the model. A few coats may be necessary to get an even coverage. Once the undercoat is dried, we're going to mix some brown into our black. Now, only a tiny dab of black is necessary when you're mixing darker shades. So use lots of brown. Let that first layer on the base dry and repeat the same on the house, adding a little bit more white in to differentiate the wood color from the dirt. Now we're undercoating the shingles in a dark gray. Once the undercoat on both parts of the mini is dried, it's time to start highlighting. This is a technique called dry brushing, where you load up a lighter shade onto the brush, wipe most of the excess off, and then use the remainder to bring out the texture at the top of the model. Doing several sweeps of this will be necessary, using increasingly lighter shades to bring out all of the texture possible. After this, we're using hot glue to put the two pieces of the model together. Now that we've got everything painted, it's time to start detailing. The first step is a model tree. We're going to use a blade to dig out a small hole to secure the base, fill that up with hot glue and put the tree into position. Later on, we'll be looking at how to make our own trees from scratch, but for now, let's just use a model tree purchased from any hobby store. The next step of detailing is adding some more foliage. I've got this artificial moss that is brilliant for adding all sorts of bushes and growths on the model. But if you don't have access to that, then a simple green pan scourer does the trick just as well. After this, we're going to paint more PVA glue around the edge of the model and then pour flock down over it. Flock is an artificial grass that's commonly used for terrain making and it will really help bring the model to life. Once the flock and the moss have dried in place, we're going to mix some green and some brown to create a nice earthy colour. Water it down and put it on the roof to add a little bit more weathering. For a last bit of detailing, I've used a small piece of an artificial flower to create a little flowering bush at the front of the mini. This is just purchased from a $2 store. You'll be really surprised what kind of things you can find at those stores that you can adapt to your own purposes. Our last step here is mixing up another muddy brown green, watering it down and dabbing it around the edge of the area that we flopped to help get a bit more of a gradient between the two bits of detail. Here we have it, the log cabin in the woods. I'll be posting some new tutorials soon, so make sure to follow this channel to keep notified when they come out.